We're gonna go with the man, a man with the plan who comes with his dog. Give it up for Iwano! Say hello to my little friend. My name is Iwanu. I'm a number one comedian from North Korea. <laughs> okay. Knock knock. Who's there? Kim Jong Un. Kim Jong Un. You take too long to open door. Now you all go jail. Why did the chicken cross the road? To get to the other side. Oh, because of Kim Jong Un torture chicken family. <laughs> That's very sad. Feathers everywhere. Your mama, so fat. How fat is she? Thank you. <laughs> she make Kim Jong Un look like a Taylor Swift. <laughs> Boom! Oh, shake it off, shake it off. Oh, I feel sorry for your mother. I'm a number one comedian from North Korea. My name is Lee Won-ho. I have a Spanish name too. My Spanish name is Ben. <laughs> yeah, Ben Deho. Every day, my good friend Carlos, he called me, Hey, Bendejo! I said, Hey, my good friend Carlos! I come to America to study at Harvard University. That is a joke. Because Harvard don't accept the Asian people. <laughs> now I work in my uncle liquor store in Compton with my good friend Carlos. Yeah, he's teaching me. You know, it's not easy being Asian. Most people don't know, but there's a high levels of Asia. <laughs> they go like this. Level one, born in Asia. Level two, born in America. Level three, adopted by America. Level four, half Asian, half American. And level five, the lowest level of Asia. <laughs> it's comedian. <laughs> yeah, my dog died about two months ago. Oh, that's a very sad. You know, when someone you love so much died, it will really make you think about life and what is a truly important. Anybody got any crystal man? <laughs> and sometimes you see a white person with a black hair, like a very black and very straight. You know, that's a very confusing for Asian people. We are like, what, what kind of Asian are you? <laughs> oh, I know, you must be a Caucasian. <laughs> yeah, I got the new dog about a, a couple of weeks ago. So. Little Chihuahua, it's very small. What? Yeah, it's almost a too small. Yeah, I'm worried one morning I'm going to wake up and be like, where's my little puppy dog? And what is this furry pancake? <laughs> yeah, when I first come to America, I come to uh, McDonald's and I order the Big Mac. I say, finally, I tried the number one hamburger in America. So no good. I go to Burger King, and maybe it should be called Burger Prince. I think in and out is the best burger. It's uh, very delicious. But uh, you go there, it's uh, no in and out. No, it'll take forever. I think the name should be Long Slow Line of Cars. <laughs> yeah, I smoked marijuana for the first time last week. Yeah. That's a very good. Yeah, Carlos, he bring to work a big fat doobie. <laughs> Yeah, we smoke the whole thing. Oh, it makes me feel so very happy. Then uh, my mouth is uh, so thirsty. Then everything goes so slow. Then I hear the music in my brain. It's uh, so beautiful. Oh, I listen to a song. Then get the louder and the louder and the louder. Then I have to sing. She bangs, she bangs. Oh, baby, when she moves, she moves. I go crazy because she looks like a flower, but she stings like a bee. Like every woman in a history. I'm done with that character, you know. Most of you guys don't know that uh, that's not how I actually talk. This is actually how I really talk, you know. My name is Jeremiah Eske. I was born and raised in Florida, Texas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm armored bread. I know you all don't know what that is, because this is Hollywood. Y'all hate America. My dad was Command Sergeant Major, 1st Cavalry Division, Florida. Yeah, it's a pretty big motherfucker deal, man, tell me. 
Me, I never gave a damn about all that military shit, though. Hey, when we was in high school, my buddies and I, we'd sell weed as soldiers. We'd throw grass clippings in there and shit. Yeah, they didn't give a damn. They were so desperate for weed, they'd buy anything. They are like, what? what kind of weed is this? I like that. Well, that, that's dandelion weed, yeah. It looked like dandelion, it's some good shit. Yeah, it ain't, it ain't easy to be an Asian test, you know what I mean? For us, it ain't about skin color or hair type. Nah. For Asian peoples, it's all about one thing. Eye shape. Ain't that some shit? Like, if I wear sunglasses, people treat me just fine. But as soon as I take them shades off, people are like, oh, well, this guy's the enemy. Well, let's not laugh at his jokes. There, you see? Yeah, man, people get weirded out when they hear the way I actually talk. People tell me all the time, they're like, you know, you don't sound Asian. I'm like, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? What, should I walk around talking like a this? And people are like, yeah. Huh. Then one day this fucking motherfucker called me Kim Jong-un, and all the little pieces started coming together. You know, Lee Wan un is my dry cleaner. <laughs> that guy barely speaks a word of English. In his shop, it's called All American Dry Cleaning. I think that's false advertisement. Mm-hmm. One thing I do know about myself is that I am a magnet for gay men. Yeah. I think it's because I'm Asian or because I'm slender or maybe just because I'm sexy as hell. <laughs> but I, I could be standing in a crowd of people and gay men will just start gravitating towards me from every direction. Before you know it, I'll be surrounded by dudes talking about water-based lubricant and poppers and shit. I'm like, how the hell I end up down here? Yeah, hell, I wish I was gay, you know. I'd be king of the gays, you know what I mean? But I guess every guy says that in the beginning, right? Every guy's like, shit, I'm the one on top. I'm the one doing all the fucking. And after a while, he's like, how the hell I end up down here? Am I my own? Yeah, my cousin's gay. Thank you. Hell, he tried to fuck me one night. I was like, dude, we are blood relatives. He's like, we can share more than just blood. Yeah, I'm so sexy, man. I turned the guy game once. Back when I had real long hair, I was just shopping at the rouse, and some guy walked up behind me and was like, hey, girl, hey, you sexy as hell. Why don't you give me a phone number? I turned around, I was like, uh, I'm a dude. He paused for like one second and was like, well, that's cool, you know, we just won't tell nobody about us. I was like, holy shit, I just turned this guy gay. I'm fucking dangerous. But one way, gay guys try to trick you, though. One way is that they'll ask you, Hey man, would you suck a dick for a billion dollars? See, that's trick. Because if you say yes, the very next question is going to be, well, would you suck a dick for half a billion dollars? If you say yes to that, you know where this is going. Uh-huh. Half an hour later, you'd be sucking that dude's dick for 30 cents. You'd be like, how the hell I end up down here? Ah, my bottle! <laughs> okay, I'm done with that character too. You know? That's not how I actually talk. This is actually how I really talk. That Jeremiah is gay. It's just a character I made, you know. I actually created that character just so I could say that catchphrase, you know what I mean? Ah, my butthole! I think it's pretty funny. Anyway, my name's Danny Honda. I'm born and raised right here in LA. Uh, actually, I grew up mostly around Pasadena, but I come to LA, you know, for on the weekends to help out my parents and shit. Like, you ever go to the liquor store and you see some little Asian kid in the back of your homework and shit? That was me. Every now and then I have to translate for my parents or whatever. It's kind of weird, right? Because, like, they're the parents, you know? I'm like, hey, mom, uh, this policeman says he's going to give you a ticket for driving too slow on the freeway. Hey, he says you got to go faster than 35. Yeah, I was in the Army, you know, for a couple years. Uh, first cavalry duty in Fort Hood. It's pretty cool, you know, but it's weird being the only Asian person, you know? Every day, people are just looking at me like, are we supposed to shoot this guy? Yeah, it's pretty cool being the Army. You get some good benefits. But probably the best benefit is, I don't know, the ability to give old men hard arms. Yeah, old men, they love hearing army stories, you know? It doesn't matter what race they are. Like if I, uh, I guess because it makes them feel younger or something, or gives them hope for the future. But if I meet some old man in a park and I start telling him army stories, tell him to come all over me. Yeah, your parents ever hit you when you were younger? Yeah, see, he's, he's my generation. I'm generation X, you know? My parents used to beat the hell out of me, you know? My mom would get a coat hanger and she'd make me stick my hands out and fucking hit my hands and shit. I was like, what the fuck kind of Chinese torture shit is this, you know? Can't you just hit me with a fucking belt or something? Like, what next, you gonna give me a fucking algebra test? Or make me carry buckets of water up a hill or some shit? Yeah, I was talking to this guy the other day. He said he's Persian. 
And the Persian from Persia? <laughs> He's like, yeah, where are you from? I was like, uh, the Han Dynasty, I guess? What are we doing over here? Yeah, I noticed a lot of uh, cultures that are like anti-gay are actually quite gay, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like Arab culture, for instance, right? They're like notorious for being harsh on their LGBTQ, yet Arab men openly hold hands in the street. You know, how hypocritical is that, right? Hmm. They're like, don't act gay! La, 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 la. <laughs> and Russians too, right? They're like uh, world famous for being violent towards their LGBTQ. But I was watching the Olympics once, and after this guy did his uh, gym, gymnastic jump thing, instead of high-fiving his teammate, he kissed him on the mouth. It wasn't just a peck either, they were like really going at it. Mm -hmm. so, we not tolerate the homosexual in Russia. Come, Vladimir. <laughs> Very strange. It seems that uh, in certain cultures, men enjoy a level of intimacy with each other that we just kind of lack out here. And I have seen a little bit, you know, because I was in the army, right? The army is very anti-gay because it's so gay. <laughs> you know, you're constantly surrounded in these situations where you're like surrounded by dudes and you're either totally naked or like mostly naked and shit. Like the shower is a perfect example, right? There used to be this one guy who'd walk around the shower every time with a rock hard boner. <laughs> yeah. You know, at that time, the policy towards gay people was don't ask, don't tell. Nobody had to ask this guy if he was gay or not. They're all knocking over shampoo bottles and shit. That <laughs> yeah, was shocking. Like, you walk in the shower room like, what the fuck? Eddie, soldier. You know, in the army, you're supposed to be hardcore, but not that hard. Not that core. <laughs> yeah, I was watching the Oscars the other day. You guys uh, see the Oscars? Yep. Yeah, that's cool, right? Yeah, towards the end, I was getting excited. I was like, hey, look, they're bringing back the mummy. But then I was like, oh, oh no, that's just Al Pacino. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was watching the History Channel about World War II. And then, uh, you know, in World War II, the English soldiers, like, they were complaining a lot about the American soldiers taking their women and stuff. They even had a saying. They were like, oh, the problem with the Yanks is that they're overpaid, oversexed, and overhealed. And they'd be all laughing. Like, ho, 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 ho. Yeah. I'm like... Would you prefer the Nazis, you ungrateful motherfuckers? Right. Yeah, I had a bad haircut the other day. It was really bad, you know? Like, uh, you ever have a haircut so bad people start treating you differently? <laughs> yeah, they're like, this guy must have Down syndrome or something. Look at that fucking thing. <laughs> I had a waitress at the Denny's trying to tie a bib around my neck. <laughs> yeah, back in the day, you know, when I was growing up, uh, you could be bi-curious, you know? That was like a thing that you could be, you know? And that's a good thing, I think, because not everyone's gay, but everyone's kind of curious to one point or another. Yeah. But that option's kind of off the table nowadays, right? Now it's like, well, I guess I'm gay forever now. <laughs> yeah, some people go overboard with the salty food and shit, you know? Like, uh, I was cooking, I cooked breakfast for my buddy the other day, and like, without even tasting it, he just started pouring salt all over and shit. I was like, dude, I think those pancakes are salty enough. Pretty much worked. I'll just tell this one story. It's the voodoo dick story. Oh. All right, a long time ago, this uh, guy, business, he's on a business trip, right? And then he's he's on a foreign land in a faraway foreign land, and he goes to his magical antique shop. And the number one item in magical antique shop is the voodoo dick, right? And he knows what it is, so he's like, look, I gotta have this. And the guy's like, no way. He's like, I'll give you a million dollars. And the guy's like, okay. So he takes it home he show, to show his wife, right? And she's like, what's this? And he's like, all right, watch. Voodoo dick, dog's ass. And so he jumps out of the box and starts fucking dog's ass, right? And she's like, what the hell? And he's like, yeah, watch. Voodoo dick, the box. And so it pops out of the dog's ass, goes back in the box. And he's like, yeah, you can use this, you know, when you're, like, you're alone or something. And she's like, I've never used that. It's fucking gross. And he's like, eh, whatever. Happy <laughs> Anyway, a couple months goes by, and then like uh, he goes on another business trip, right? This time, like a really long one. And after a couple months, she's like, uh, man, that voodoo dick, right? And so she's like, all right. And she's like, all right, voodoo dick, my vagina, right? And so it starts going to work on her, right? And she's like, oh, wow, this is working pretty good. But then it's been a couple months, right? So she forgets how to turn it off. And then she has to go to work, so she just kind of puts her clothes on over it. And she shows up, she's like, ah. Your boss like, what? What's wrong with you? And she's like, nothing, nothing. It's, ah, ah. It's like, no, no, there's something definitely wrong with you. I can tell. She's like, no, no, nothing. It's, it's fine. Ah. He's like, no, you better tell me or you're gonna be fired, right? She's like, okay. And she starts explaining. She's like, 
It's this thing called the voodoo dick. It's like, what? Voodoo dick my ass. <laughs> All right, my name's Eulalia, I'm out of here. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.